Each minute, the still cameras shoot overviews covering the valley and upload to the internet. Several observations of the phenomenon have been obtained from these cameras all year round. But what about the video cameras? After a year's tense wait, it finally happens. The Hestalm phenomenon is caught on camera. Chris Lado, welcome to Lado Files. Hello, welcome to Lado Files. Today, I have an exciting interview with Jean Moen. He's been a critical member of the investigation team at Hestalen. So he's investigated Hestalen lights, all the crazy phenomena that's in this valley in Norway. I didn't really know much about it, just what I've heard that there's interesting phenomena there. There's strange lights there. It's obviously called Hestalen lights, but it sounds like there's interesting events around the whole Hestalen area. So I'm very excited to be introduced to the team. So team that have the actual investigative equipment out in the open, and we're going on scene right now to Jean. Hello. Hello. Welcome, Jean. Thank you. How are you doing? Is it cold out there? Yeah, it's a bit cold because the sun's gone down and, and it's early spring here in Heston. Excellent. So you're out on, on location, right? Yes. I'm just a few hundred meters from my home. Okay. And how so long I've, have you lived there? I've been here since 1976, every year. Before that, I went to school in Trondheim, the nearest town. And then I go back to my farm, and I've been a farmer for 50 years. Farmer farm near before. that location? Is it near the, the valley? Yes, in the valley. In the valley, few, okay. Yes, only a few hundred meters from my place here now. And what, what got you interested into the phenomena? Why did you start, I guess, investigating? Or? Started with that I saw something in 1982. And it was very special because... In the evening, my swagger and my mother, we stand outside my home and look an airplane without wings. Without wings, but with black windows. Huh. Move slowly through, through the valley, follow the river and move out of valley. And I wonder what is this? What can I explain? What what can, what have I seen without wings? That was the problem. Was so there I, any sound I, or no, no sound? It couldn't be an airplane because we saw it only eight to one thousand meters from my home. Excellent. So I think we have drawings of that that encounter. So we'll yes. we'll bring that up later. So that, that was in 1982, you said? 82, in the beginning of October. Okay, and then, so after that, I guess, did that encourage you to start? It, it piqued your interest into yes. the phenomena? Yes, I follow the team up here, team from the university and from Erlingstrand team in Sarsborg, in the, uh, in the university there. So I helped Erling for... Uh, nearly 35 years wow. helping with uh, build up the blue box and helping with practice in the battery problems in the blue box and everything so i have i have been near erling all the time and i have listened to many citizens up here heard the story about them what i have seen what i have heard but because something some people have seen something and heard something special near the ground and in the hillside. So the you've glider. interviewed a lot of these people in the surrounding area. Yes. Ask what they saw and what, what they feel about the observation. 
but only few photos from that time in the, in the 80s. I see. And so what, what is your background? I'm a, your... I'm a, I've been a farmer all my time, but I have follow the UFO observation up here all the time and listen to Erling and listen to everyone that is experts on UFO. In, okay, in, and you in, mentioned in the, the blue boxes, right? Those are the the large blue, or I guess not large, but small blue containers. Yes. That house all of the electronics to investigate. Yes. So many things of lights every year, but uh, between uh, in period of two or three years, I have seen object objects that move slowly and fast. Okay, so that's what was interesting to me is, you know, the name is Hestalin Lights, or that's the the name that I know it as. But okay. you mentioned your first sighting was an actual object. Yes. That's true. And so you see objects, it sounds like not every year, but you definitely see lights every year. Is that what you're yes. saying? Yes, every year. What do the what do the lights look like? They can be green, red, blue, and white. And they can put light on the ground, like a spotlight. Wow. So I see they have actual spotlights that point down. So the lights yes. have light emanating from them. Yes. And the spotlight is so sharp that outside the spotlight is darkness, but in the spotlight is daylight. Very. And that can the light can move out and move in, if you understand me. Yes, like I guess you know those flashlights when you focus them? You know, it goes out and in? Is it like yes. that? Yes, on the ground. So the area can be many hundred meters with spotlight and can be only small, only 50 meters. They can move very slowly in only a few kilometers in an hour. And they wow. can stand still for one hour, two hours, and then move very fast. In 2009, I saw the light standing over an area in Hestalen. And after a while, the light moved out to the stars in two seconds. Mm -hmm. Just like you put a football in the area. Like if you just kick a ball, it just flew out into space, is, your, yes. is what you're saying. Very fast. Very fast. How do the lights move when they move? Sometimes they can follow the riverside, just near the river, come to a bridge, lift up, move over the bridge, and then go down to the river. Huh. What, what distance from the bridge? You know, is this a high altitude is, uh, or it's low altitude? Yes, the bridge is about uh, 12, 14 meters high. Okay, so low so level. Move up and go over the bridge and go down to the river. In snowstorm, in wind. So that is special. So you saw this, I guess, with your own eyes. You saw this light go up to the bridge, you know, yes. basically climb in altitude, go over the bridge, and then go down So yes. to traverse it. Many people have seen that light type of light. Small bridge, only two meters, only a small light, 30 centimeters, huh. move over the bridge and then to the to the river again. Wow, I mean, that's very interesting. And these, these lights, you know, I hear a lot about orbs, basically pilot captains. They seem to be yeah. recording them. I had one captain he was a pilot of a commercial airliner, Eric Delgado. Mm -hmm. And he filmed like an orb, basically. To him, he said it was just a stationary ball of light, I guess. It was flying with the aircraft. Okay. What what are these what do these lights look like? Is um, you know, can you 
do you have a, I guess, do we have good videos of them first of these Hestalin lights that we could possibly show? Not so much with this small ball, but I have stories from the local people here that the ball followed the, the car beside the car mm -hmm. and then move faster and in front of the car, I'll go into the wood, hmm. moving around the trees, and then disappeared. Interesting. That was in, in the summertime, in one o'clock in the night. Here, up here is daylight at that time. And the ball followed the, the car for two, three hundred meters, and then moved into the wood. Excellent. Three person three person is that the the valley behind you yes you, end yeah. of the valley end of the valley the valley is 15 kilometers long and it's a high mountain valley with small farms and yes we have, we live on the top on on Trendelag. that is the area of of middle of Norway. And then the, the blue boxes, where are those? Are there any blue boxes nearby? No, but in my back, you have a white box, but you don't see him now. But the white box is coming here for uh, four years ago. And I use the instrument on the ground to check out what's happening in the ground. But I have only a few observation from the ground, but sometimes they have 20 kilowatts of electricity melt in that instrument. Hmm. 20,000 kilowatts. 20,000, so 20 megawatts. Yes, yes. That's the kind of energy that they're picking up? Is that what they're yes. detecting? Yes. But the, the 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 conclusion is in the, in the, in the Europe in the organization there. They haven't told us. But oh, my really? my friend in the Salzburg tell me that what twenty thousand kilowatts melt in that white box area. I see. And what is the goal of the white box? You know, what is what is that project? Started only for uh, four years ago. I pick up some some boxes like blue box, put it on the top on the mountain back back here with helicopter, and put instrument inside. And what's the goal? Do you know who who paid for that? The the, the University of Sarsborg. Okay. Paid. And what's the so, goal of their uh, these these? boxes are they looking specifically for uap events yes but coming from the ground my friends tell I me i see not from the okay so stuff. then can you explain the blue boxes blue box is follow light that move fast or slowly in the front of the camera hmm. at blue box stop stop or move and the camera start start photos and maybe start video. You see, we have seen this light and object for 40 years. 40 years without knowing what it is. Hmm. Okay, so let's, let's go to the presentation here, back to this. So 1980, this is the coming of the saucers. Mm -hmm. tells the story of August Holden, the hunter. The three vehicles he experienced meant that the man would never dare to walk in the woods and fields again. That's weird. Okay, so that's this man here? Yes. So, he, yeah, can you, explain, a, uh, can you expl it, explain this? Yes, he was a hunter, hunting birds in the, in the autumn in Hestalen. After some a trip in the, in the, in the mountain, Something come over August, and they have shadows around him. Ah, okay. Like this. And he, he told that it was only five meters from him to the object. Okay, he said it was only five meters. 
Yes. And in the same second, the three rise up. They rise up in 90 degrees huh. and then go away. In Departed. Very fast, very fast. No sounds, but he felt something in his body. Hmm. And when you say, did they actually turn like 90 degrees? Did it go like yes. this? Yes. And then departed? Yes. And do you know how it departed? Did they depart like this way first or? Yes. They move 90 degrees and then go away from him. Oh, interesting. Disappear. And August, he sold the, the rifle <laughs> and never come back to Hastal. Yeah, it looks like it. Fear and trembling. Okay, that was in 1980. Have you talked yeah. to him in person or? No, I don't meet him. Yeah. So the story came, came uh, later on. The story was unknown for a few years. And he's considered credible? There's no reason why he would lie about this? I mean. No. And uh, his friend? was only a few hundred meters from him, he saw not, nothing. He saw nothing. Really? Mm. Oh, interesting. This one is my story. Okay. It's my story. Yeah. We was outstanding my house and we'll look around us because it was a very bright evening. No windy. No rain, only cloudy. And then we saw something move in the riverside and go and follow the river and move like this in the river, over the river and disappeared. And after a while, we heard something hunters have seen like the same we saw in the other side of the valley. Okay, so what did you see? It's, it looked like the airplane without wings. Okay, this is the plane without wings, yes? Yes. Okay, so this is your first sighting that you, that you mentioned in the beginning. Yes, that was very special because I was sure about it was an airplane in 10 minutes. <laughs> in 10 minutes, I thought no wings no noise no hearings and slowly moving only 40 50 kilometers per hour and then disappeared in the wood and when it when it disappeared how did it how did it disappear or because of the the terrain in hastalen you don't see very long distance because the river is moving and the riverside is high up and the object was very low in the area only maybe under 200 meters above the river wow and do you remember the, what the color is the it material? was gray green gray but not any no no not blinking anything no light no light only gray and do you think is there any way it could have been a dirigible like a a lighter than air craft no it's not possible because it kind came from our side and going north from us so why is so that not possible yeah north is to the right yeah, I, I don't understand. Why is why would that be not possible, I guess? Because if it has been an airplane, we must have hear the noise noise from it. Yes. I'm no what I mean is like a balloon. Is there any way you know No. No balloon. Yeah. No balloon. Up here. Nothing. Yeah, I mean I've never seen a balloon like that. I'm just trying to consider what any possibility could have been, you know. I guess, why do you think it wasn't a balloon? What was your inclination for why you knew or you thought it was an airplane? Where did it come from? A balloon? Looks like a bread. 
Yeah. Is a balloon like like a bread? It's not possible. <laughs> yeah. For, not for me. And the black windows, that's interesting. Yes, the black window in the middle was a bigger than on the end of it. Oh, so it was bigger in the center and they got they got progressively smaller? Yes. Hmm. So it looks like it was on discus. Ah, I see. And was do you remember if there was any wind? No wind. No wind. It was a quiet evening and we stand outside and talk a little and then we saw that object. Okay. And so you mentioned that the the windows in the center of the craft or the object were larger than at the edges. So yes. it, it appears like these were decreasing in size. Mm. Mm. Which is kind of interesting, you know, if it's larger in the center, because this the object you know, I hear a lot that a tic tac shaped object. Do you think it resembled a tic tac? Or do you think it looked more like a like a plate? Not like not like a plate. Hmm. Not like a plate. It looked like Maybe. a piece of bread. <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay, interesting. Okay, anything else on this event? Anything else interesting to know? No, because after 10 minutes, I had to go to my mother and ask her, what did you see? Did you see an airplane or did you see something else? And it, she said that she don't see any wings of that airplane. Hmm. And my mother saw something in 1995 for two and a half hours. <laughs> two and a half hours. Yes. On on this on this event, do you do you remember how far away you were? Between eight hundred and one thousand meters. Okay. In, in the beginning, in the beginning, and then it moved hmm. slowly out of the valley. Wow, oh. excellent! And your mother also saw it. Yes, my mother and my my sister's man. So to Sister, husband in law, we say. Husband, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so those so three witnesses. Yes. And then it all matched, I guess. Was his account the same? Did did he have the same account, the other man? Yeah, yes, yes. We discussed it during the evening. This what we what we really saw. Wow. So we agree that there were no wings on that object. Okay. Yeah. I don't know of any object that can, that looks like that, that can fly like that. Okay. All right. Let's move it on then. Lurking in the shadows. Yes. Okay. 40 years of light and strangeness in the valley. Mm -hmm. Carrie has never seen a light or anything unnatural in the valley and therefore did not care much about the stories. In 2017, when she couldn't sleep, she went down to the kitchen and she pulled up the kitchen curtains and saw what she has described as the spaceship from another world. Yes. Okay, so who is Carrie? Kari? Kari, Kari is coming from a, a town on the west side of Norway. And she lives in the cabin up here for weeks in the summer. And she has been here from... 1980 and up to days to these days she come here this summer too in 2018 she was 68 years old okay and she so this just wrote, happened in 2018 yes she wrote the story to me and my friend and after that she don't want to speak about it for 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 months and for years. Wow. Okay. But especially, she opened the window 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 and saw out in the darkness. And then, we saw this one. Okay. So it says here, object observed by Kari, Helen Kaiseras in Mayan. Yes. West of Hestalen in August 2018. The object was initially on the ground. Mm -hmm. 
After some seconds, the object turned over. So again, mm -hmm. that 90 degree kind of turn and flew over the hill and out of sight. The mm -hmm. bottom consisted of circular tubes drawn by Mads A. Honneborg. Oh, look at that. And after a while, something come back because the light was only on the bottom of the object. Uh, okay. It, yeah, it looks like it's drawn here. So it's sitting down. It looks like, you know, about the size of a tree. So what is yes. maybe 50 feet or 40 yes. feet, say? I think between the, the cabin and the object was between 300 and 400 meters. Okay. Because on to the top of the, the mountain, it's about 700 meters. So it was between the cabin and the top of the mountain. And how, what did she relay about the object? Did she, it looks like it, it has different colors. Yes, different colors. But move very fast after a few seconds when she opened the window. I see. And so outside. But you, you don't wake his husband. She don't take any mobile photo. She only stand, look to the light. Yeah, I think if it only happens for a few seconds. Mm. Okay. That's quite interesting. And from 2018. Yes. Okay, and then we have the ghost rockets. Yes, is that what this is? Back in the 40s, late 40s. Okay. Not so, uh, only a only few 30, 40 kilometers from here. And people saw something go into the water. Into the water? Into the water. Okay. And I guess this is the, the artist's rendition of the object. Mm. But no, no people live that saw that object now. Only the story about it. I see. But this is it. It looks like a Tic Tac with, with little wings on it. Yes. But I don't know the distance from what where they stand to the to the water area. Hmm. Excellent. And then you mentioned that your mother had a sighting for two and a half hours. Yes. That was in the Christmas in 1995. In the evening, she helped me in the, in the farmhouse and she go out and go to his house, to her house. Then after a while, something come from the the hillside and move in the middle of the valley and the light was so bright that the house was in black area if you understand me hmm. the light was so sharp that the, the house was black hmm. then she go home go to the window and saw the light lift up and go a bit higher in the area and then put light on the ground hmm. and move slowly and she, she saw the trees she saw everything in the mountainside and it stand for hours in the same position over the headstone and the last time she saw it was at 22.15 in the evening. And the object or the light moved slowly into between two mountains with the light on the ground. Oh, interesting. She, so it's again the light, the light on the ground. Yes. And when you, say, when you say the light was so bright or sharp, the light was so sharp that the house was in dark, darkness yes. can you describe that more or maybe a different way i don't quite understand okay the light is so bright that it's problem to look directly to it 
Got it. Yeah, it's so bright that it, you can't see anything else. It gains yes. down yeah. everything yes. else. Yes. Okay. Yeah, excellent. So we have a, a video here from 4 December 99. Yes. Two, I'll just play it here. Yeah. yeah. Two years after the blue box, beginning of the blue box. Then something goes through the video tape on the blue box. And we, saw, we see something go into this hat. If you move slowly, you see something move into the hat. Oh, okay. It's a difficult right, to so see. that was the video. I think now it's playing over again. Is that correct? So this is recorded from a blue box, yes? Yes, yes. And so the point of the blue box is, is to get video evidence of these lights. That's, that's right. But I can tell you something that is very interesting. This is the best observation from the blue box. Later on, we, we have seen only light, moving light on the west side of Hestalen. This is coming from the south of Hestalen. And the ob observation moved from the blue box area and to the south of Hestalen for a, for a while. Six, seven years ago, a German a professor came to Heston with with camera put on the cabin on the east side of Heston. But the light in the south of Heston disappeared. And in 2018, the object was in Kari area, very west of Heston. Mm. So the light moves from the camera area and go in the shadow of the cameras. What do you mean in the shadow of the cameras? The, the camera cannot see the object that people have seen in the west mm. of Heston because of the mountain. Uh, I see. So he was unable to actually video it. Okay, excellent. So that's a blue box right there, yes? Yes. And you see cool. the camera and the, the instrument of the, of the... Yeah, here I see cameras. Yes. Oops, sorry. So there is a lot of intelligence in the light. So what have you learned over the years on, on these lights? Or, you know, how do you capture data? What do you think they are, et cetera? I have learned that the light disappear, disappeared whether you see your airplanes crossing over Hestalen, they, they go down on the light, go from bright to red, and can stand for one hour in the same position. Hmm. And after the, the airplane time here in Hestalen, it's around 8 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock, then we have seen that the light have left off. So, sorry, can you say that again? The end. The part? light, light goes down from bright, very bright light, and go in between two mountains, hmm. and take a red light on. Okay, so first it's a white light, very bright. Yes. And then it goes in between two mountains. Yes. And turns to a red light. Yes, and stay there for one hour, maybe more. Wow. Then, it's. Rise up into the heaven only on one second or two. And then you can, but people say that they actually see it going up. Is that correct? You have it on the, the blue box cam. That okay. the light go on, the, the red light go, on, go up. So I was able to zoom in on, on a blue box here. So this is an actual blue box. Yes. It looks like you have your cameras here. Yes. You have radar, 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 yes. Communication. Mm -hmm. I don't know, wind sensors as well, huh? So there's yes. environmental sensors. Yes, that's right. Obviously. Okay, excellent. And when you say that this has been documented, this white light on video, 
turning to red. Uh, these mm -hmm. things have been documented. Mm -hmm. So have these videos been captured using this? When you mentioned uh, the white, the white light going in between the two mountains, turning to a red yeah. light, yeah. staying for an hour and then shooting up. These were captured. This, this was captured using this camera. Not, not the white light, but the red light was, was photographing red light move up on the camera. Oh, interesting. Man, it sounds, I would love so much to get a Sky360 system there as well. What is the future plans? I, I have asked Erling and Björn from the University of Sarsborg, get better eyes, get better ears. Hmm. You have to, okay. so, something must come from, from it. Hmm. I have one person here in Heston that have, have a, a noise from this object. It's back in 1999. 24 of of May in the afternoon he together with his brother and wife saw a rectangular white light standing from the horizon and into the wood inside the white light different colors of light move and change place like this up and down and i asked him did you hear anything i have hear a clicking noise clicking like you take off the light in the house but how does it disappear when you take off the tv disappeared They saw it oh. for 40, 40 seconds. And 40 the distance seconds. and the distance from where they sat and to the uh, to the top of the the wood side is only four hundred meters. And the object, the light object, was ten meter, you think. Hmm. So another sighting. Are there also the strange additional stories, you know, the crazy abduction stories. Are there any sort of interesting yes. stories like that as well? We have a lot of them. We have yes. a lot of them, maybe two, 300 stories wow. from different people from different, from all over the world came in here and have seen something, something strange. And the, the citizen of Hestalen too. Wow. Well, very interesting, John. I hope so. But I'm not the best in English, you know, not technical English. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. No, I, I understood everything. So no, no issues. Okay. Or if I Thank didn't, I, I asked a question, you know? Yes, that's good. Is there, so this is just the first, first guest from our Hestalen team. Very excited to talk with your compadres. Yes. Is there anything else you want to relay? Any any other points? I could tell you a story about my wife. But my wife, she don't want to go in front of the camera and tell yes. the story. Because it was very strange. Hmm. And the object was only five meters from her car. Wow. Can you relay the story for the her? Story that, yes, the story that my wife go from uh, Hestalen to the community by a Toyota Cresida. And in the end of Hestalen, you have some hillside and you have something that we call it in Norway, we call it autovern. It's auto that you cannot drive out of the road, you see? Hmm. And outside of the auto, object, object like a Volkswagen hang outside that auto. Hmm. And he opened the window because the car stopped. And he, 
they have something like uh, you go into the electricity producer area then the object go down from the road and into the river side she start the car and go for 10 30 meters and then the object was disappeared okay another light object just five meters from her car yes but it's day daytime daytime interesting yes yes it was the gray looks like it has a form as a volkswagen oh really so it looked just like a volkswagen like yes which model the like a camper <laughs> van or like a car a car a car okay it kind of um, reminds me of the ghost rocket image we just saw we looked at yes yes nearly that but the problem was that the car stopped the car stopped okay so she didn't stop the car yes the car stopped on its own yes and this is back in april 1997. okay but the problem was that i don't believe her when she came home oh you didn't i didn't <laughs> But even though you've seen your own airplane with no wings. Yes, but here was only a few meters from the car. Only a few meters. Yes. And so what was her description? It was a solid object or? Yes, a solid object. And could she see into it or it was all just the, the same gray? Yes. Material. Yes, the same gray material. And do you see the lights during the day? Yes, I've seen it. But the light is, is have no, have no area. The light is more difficult. You see, diffuse. I think is the word. Yeah, diffuse. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. Diffuse. Yes. So it is seen during the day, but the light's more diffuse. Yes. But we have you... a, we have photos from uh, daytime that the object looks like the boxes really yes and the the shadow side is on the sunny side and the the the, the bright side is on the shadow side you still understand me the sun in yes. uh, came from the one side that is mm. that is the shadow looks like shadow and the other side it looks like sunny wow Two person, one photo, and two one other person saw it. Do you know how long they saw this for? The the man that took the photo, he didn't he didn't see the box. Huh. He saw he saw it on the photo after. But the, the girl, she saw it from the cabin, near the lake here, in daytime, at, at the same time in the day i see any other square any other square objects <laughs> i can you tell you 100 stories 100 yes. stories many of, of them yes wow so but, i guess is uh, is it being documented are all these stories being documented or yes the, the most of them the most of them I have a story from early in the late in the 80s. Old man, he, he is dead now. He saw in the in the night time is he saw two different colors of light coming moving in the riverside. They moved together, but when the moon put the light on the box i see the box because she saw something between the two lights it looks like a big box uh. and after some few seconds the moonshine disappeared and there was only two red and blue light after I mean, he, just... he saw it he saw it from the bedroom and he told me the story 
what you have seen. Because on the back, the background was only a white hillside with snow in the winter. Hmm. And it started with two different colors of light that move together like this. And then when the, the two light come in the area of the, the snowy hillside and the moonshine, he saw object with brown color. A brown colored object. Yes. And after a few seconds, the color disappeared and he saw only two lights. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it reminds me of on the East Coast. Okay. Have you heard of the, the box within a sphere? Uh huh. Well, wow, that's an interesting bird out in the Hestalen hillside. <laughs> well, excellent. Well, thank you, John. I, I hope you that, understand that's me. That's all we have for time. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. I hope you understand me that you can make uh, a story from Hestalen for you. Excellent. Yeah, I think this is just episode one. We'll have more episodes. And okay. thank you so much for educating me mm. and my audience on the Heston Lights. Yeah, it sounds like just an amazing area with a, a history going back to 1940. 40, 40 years. 40 years that people have seen light here. N nearly all the month in the year for 40 years. And it's also interesting. It seems like it'll be a research hotspot. Yes. You know, with these blue boxes. So one of the few places I know about, at least, where you have long-term UAP observation going on. Mm -hmm. we, well, we, start with, we start with UFO, and today we call it a UFO. Yeah, you still call it a UFO. Yes, we still call it a UFO. Excellent. So you're hunting, you're, you're capturing UFOs. Yes. In Norway. Well, again, thank you, John. Thanks for your time. I hope to get up to Norway. I would love to see this in person and I wish you all the luck. Hope to, you're uh, welcome. You're very welcome. All and right, maybe thanks. you can go stay outside during the night, observation the, the stars and what we will see. Then maybe one day I can say I saw a UFO. Yes. If I can see one of these. You're welcome. 